Hi, I'm Nathan Retta. For those who haven't met me, I've um, been in Denver for 10 years. I've spent uh, most of my time as an Android engineer, primarily within the mobile app space, um, streaming specifically. Um, this talk was actually first written last year, and a lot's happened in Kotlin multi-platform since then. And so I'm excited to share a little bit about um, some of the new, shiny new stuff. Um, I've been streaming audio and video for four to five years, excited to perhaps implement some of the shared business logic for some of the stuff that I do in Kotlin multi-platform. Um, and I, as I describe what Kotlin multi-platform is, you'll see why um, it's powerful. To get started with brief overview, Kotlin multi-platform allows you to share code between iOS and Android projects, um, at least Kotlin multi-platform mobile. There is a version of Kotlin multi-platform that allows you to share business uh, logic across multiple clients, desktop apps, for example, and also web browsers. Um, but the scope of this talk is limited to the most common use case, which is Kotlin multi-platform mobile for sharing between mobile clients, iOS, and Android. Um, JetBrains is the company that's behind multi uh, Kotlin multi-platform, as well as the uh, Kotlin language itself. I'm sure many of you have used JetBrains tools. Their IDEs are quite popular. Um, I myself pay for the bundle for the, their whole suite of, of tools. It's been quite nice. Um, as far as mobile application architectures, um, the most common uh, architecture that we see in the presentation layer is model view, view model. Um, MVVM architecture is, and is pretty standard on Android and it's quite popular on iOS as well. In fact, that's the layer that differs between, um, between clients. So Kotlin multi-platform mobile does not actually seek to um, render any views in any specific way. It allows you to describe your views in native, um, using native toolkits. Um, so for the presentation layer, native iOS tools or common the common uh, tool sets for UI on iOS are Swift UI and UIKit. And so Kotlin multi-platform mobile actually does not touch that layer. Similarly, on the native Android uh, view layer, you have the, the standard options that you would normally enjoy with, um, you know, either XML layouts or the new Jetpack Compose. And it's actually possible to use a cross-platform UI solution at this view layer, whether it be um, Flutter, which is a Google uh, framework for developing mobile apps using the language called Dart, or React Native, um, which is also very popular. Uh, there are a number of things that you can do in the view layer. Um, but in the domain layer where Kotlin multi-platform mobile lives, um, uh, on the left side, what you'll see is a traditional native mobile app architecture where iOS and Android business logic are separate, um, which point independently to um, Swift and um, Kotlin uh, models, as well as backend APIs that are often shared. So often you see complete apps written in Swift or in um, Kotlin, whether it be for iOS and for Android apps. But with Kotlin multi-platform, the idea is to share that business logic in your domain layer shared models and shared business logic. And um, the backend APIs will typically be as they normally would be if you were not using Kotlin multi-platform mobile. And to get started, um, first thing that you'll need to do is go over to the Android developer website, um, download Android Studio at the link shown here. Alternatively, you could also install IntelliJ IDEA, and it, you will have to, in both cases, get the Kotlin multi-platform plugin. Um, so that's actually um, in preferences or in settings um, where you have to then navigate down to the plugins and pull and do a quick search for Kotlin multi-platform. Um, within Android Studio, as you'll see later in the presentation, it's it provides good support for Kotlin multi-platform mobile, but not so much for um, Kotlin multi-platform for desktop and web clients. Um, on the right side of the screen here, you'll see that there's a bit of 
this is coming from the JetBrains website. There's a bit of support as far as videos and guides and things that you can do um, for Kotlin multi-platform, as well as the ability to target um, Windows, Linux, Android, iOS, watchOS, et cetera, with Kotlin multi-platform. Um, this, this is actually just a visual representation of what we just, what I just discussed about how to actually install the Kotlin multi-platform uh, plugin. Um, so those steps are, this, these steps are for Android Studio. It's very similar in IntelliJ IDEA. There's actually a, a GUI for creating a Kotlin multi-platform mobile application within the templates that exist with um, Android Studio and also IntelliJ IDEA with the option to um, do different build uh, framework distributions for iOS targets. And that's actually quite nice. And that's how I generate projects when I'm using Kotlin multi-platform myself. Um, as far as the structure of the app that's created, uh, there's a shared module for all of the shared logic that's going to exist for both the iOS and Android clients. Um, which is a Kotlin, uh, uh, Kotlin only module, and that's built using the Gradle build tool. The Android client also uses Gradle for a JVM target, and the iOS app uses Swift using Xcode, um, which builds, uh, you know, the native iOS project uses iOS build tool such as um, Clang and Swift C compilers. Um, it gets a bit different once you're using Kotlin JS, and frankly, I have no experience with the JavaScript aspect of Kotlin multi-platform. Um, but there is support in the community for um, the if you were to actually want to use common Kotlin code in order to um, target a web browser. But that's not something that I've actually explored. Um, diving into the weeds a little bit here. Um, this is the, the uh, folder structure of what will exist if you actually create a Kotlin multi-platform project. Um, you have your root directory. You have a shared library that exists underneath the root directory and then separate iOS and Android app, app folders that house all the native specific code. So everything that will be shared has to go through this um, slash shared library. And that's the, the code sharing uh, folder. So within that, um, you have common code that's going to be shared between um, your iOS and Android clients. And this structure is created for you once you use the, um, the standard project uh, generator that um, Android Studio provides if you install the Kotlin multi-platform plugin. There is um, a way in which you can actually provide some uh, common, common code to be separate across platforms. Um, this, this has to do with uh, iOS and Android uh, native implementations that may be separate. This pattern is called the expect actual pattern. So if you wanted to access a platform specific API such as Bluetooth, um, or maybe some audio specific API or video player, um, this expect actual pattern provides a way for you to define that there is an expected implementation to be shared in the, or to be defined in the common folder. And then in the iOS and Android, main folders, you provide the actual implementation. So if you look, you'll see uh, in the common main folder, expect class platform um, with a uh, final value for platform, which is of type string. And then in iOS and Android folders, we provide the native implementations uh, using on the iOS side happens to use something called UI device and on the Android side, we're using um, the build, the o Android OS build version, uh, but they both adhere to the um, expect um, actual paradigm. And this code will fail at compile time if you weren't to, if you were not to provide a, 
um, an actual implementation. So there's a bit of safety and also this allows you to write unit tests in a, in a common and expect actual uh, pattern for both platforms. So you can guarantee that your architecture is going to be unified across your Android and iOS clients. Um, this, the build system is different between iOS and Android. Um, so for Kotlin, in order to uh, compile correctly for Android, there's a compiler, which is the Kotlin JVM provide, uh, compiler, which you get for free once you're using um, Android Studio. The bridge over to iOS is a bit different. There is a Kotlin native compiler, which produces an um, iOS dot framework binary. Uh, uh, so this these compilers are different. Your compile targets are different. Um, Android being a JVM target and um, Kotlin being an LVV, LLVM native uh, target. And so under the hood, that's what's happening when you write shared code. Um, it's actually being compiled differently for iOS and for Android. Once you start sharing code between iOS and Android, um, a, multi a multitude of libraries are available to you in order to assist with the code sharing. Um, you are under no uh, obligation to use any of these shared libraries. But um, some examples of, of the native way in which we do um, networking serialization and database operations are shown here in this table. With iOS, it's quite common to use a library called Alamofire to conduct all of your network calls. And with Android, um, there's a different library called Retrofit, which has uh, been created by Square. It's an open source project. Um, with Kotlin multi-platform, they provide um, a shared library, and this, they, the they here being JetBrains, and that library is called KTOR. Some of you may have, have experience with KTOR. I have used it a bit for Kotlin multi-platform. It's nice, um, but you're under no obligation to share networking code. So if you prefer, you can use Alamo Fire and Retrofit for your um, network stack. Similarly with serialization, um, iOS and Android have both libraries and also um, native options for um, serialization. Um, Android being quite varied in terms of how many libraries there are. I've seen JSON, Moshi, and Jackson all in production. With iOS, it's much more standard, standardized on the codable protocol. Um, Kotlin provides something called Kotlin X serialization to allow you to share your um, if you were if you choose um, your networking calls, then will be um, serialized and deserialized using um, the Kotlin X library. Most the of of the three uh, options that are shown here for like networking serialization and database, I would say database operations are actually the most common code sharing uh, that I've personally seen using the SQL Delight abstraction layer. I'm not sure why this is so popular, but um, SQL Delight, which has been built by Cash App or Square, uh, Square Cash App being interchangeable, has been a, a quite a popular option against the native core data, which is a bit clunky on iOS, but still very popular. And then the room abstraction layer um, that Android provides, um, those are both you know, widely used options, but SQL Delight is used um, um, in, in pure native implementations as well. I've seen that SQL Delight is quite popular. So that would be a library I would certainly look into if I wanted to um, share database uh, SQL Delight or SQLite database operations. Um, the, the build files, you have the option of using um, the Groovy, the, the Groovy scripting language, or you could also use the Kotlin specific um, KTS files for um, describing your Gradle dependencies. And this is an example of a source set for like the shared build.gradle.kts file for um, defining our dependencies. In this case, we're using um, the KTOR client for shared networking, and then also a coroutine specific version for Android, as well as um, a KTOR client for iOS. 
And so this is the, you have the option to select between Kotlin build scripts or Groovy build scripts once you get going. Um, this slide's a bit out of date. The networking has gotten, or concurrency has gotten much better with the new, um, with the new um, Kotlin native multi-threading library. Um, when this talk was originally written, Kotlin native concurrency was quite difficult. And it was actually a reason why people opted not to select Kotlin multi-platform as a code share tool. Um, but these days with the new multi-threading library, you don't face some, as some of the same issues that we faced previously as re um, regarding freezing and just the memory model being unfortunate. This would be a topic on its own if we were to talk about the concurrency with uh, Kotlin multi-platform, but it's something to be aware of is there's been um, some improvement in this area. I wanted to link this to the, the actual meetup description that there's like a code sample available. Um, I'll probably do that after, after this, this talk. There's also another, um, I'll actually have some live code if we wanna, we can actually exit out of this presentation here. And what I'll do is move Android Studio here. I'm not sure if you see this or not. Are you able to see an app? Can you let me know? Yeah, we see your IntelliJ now. Okay. I'll share the link for this in the description, but this is actually a starter kit called KAMP kit. And um, we have an emulator running with this specific uh, Kotlin multi-platform app. Uh, and it's, it's a very simple app. It, it supports pull to refresh. And also, um, this is backed by a local database. It's actually using SQL Delight um, as far as the data, the SQL operations are concerned. And I'll actually pull up the iOS implementation um, side by side. So this is the rendering here and all of the view layers are native. So in this case, we're using Swift UI um, for all of the view rendering and only the business logic is shared here. So what we're seeing is um, a real um, iOS app alongside the corresponding Android app where all of the business logic is shared. And this is a simple example and one that you get for free when you use CampKit. And so I'll link this in the description as well. Um, I guess now is a good time to pause and ask questions. That's all I wanted to cover for an intro talk. Is this- um, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so <clears throat> I think that this is a, uh, a little bit Similar, at least in in the mission and vision than Flutter. And I know that Flutter has a kind of a, its own design system yes. to follow the process. It's the same thing in, in Kotlin. It is similar. Flutter is different in a number of ways. So Flutter actually does define your view layer for you. So um, in the presentation, we discussed the the fact that Kotlin multi-platform doesn't actually share or define your view layer at all. Um, the way in which Flutter renders components is actually backed by the Skia library, which is a C++ library. And so you don't use native views. You actually draw directly to the canvas and you bypass all of the native views using Flutter and instead just use the Skia graphics engine to render views. So with Flutter, you can actually render you abstract away the operating systems rendering and just draw directly on the screen, directly to the pixels on the screen with Flutter. And in that way, it's actually powerful um, because you can, you're not limited to just iOS and Android. Um, you can actually render across many different devices. And so Flutter is quite capable of doing um, embedded, um, I've seen Flutter used in cars with um, UIs around the different like um, infotainment systems and things like that. Um, so Flutter is, is pretty interesting. It solves a, it 
it doesn't um it would be it would be possible to use Kotlin multi-platform alongside Flutter. I have not seen it done, but that's something that can also be done. <laughs>